Hi, I'm Michaela, an instructor with TechWise Academy. Today we're going to be using Scratch Junior, which is a free coding app that combines coding and creativity. Today we're going to be focusing on the blue coding blocks and the yellow coding blocks. So we'll be getting answering the questions of how do I get my character to move? How can I control when they move? And can my character do two different actions at once? Something like going to the left or to the right and then going up and down at the same time. So on our screen we have Scratch Jr. And this is Tick. Tick is my starting character. I'm using a different version of Scratch Jr. If I click on one of these categories, it will open up whichever blocks I need. So this would be the purple block category. These would be the blue ones. We're gonna start with these actions. This one was to the right, and this one is to the left. So every time I press this, Tick will move one space to the right or one space to the left. And you'll notice how Tick does change the direction that they are facing. Perfect. A helpful hint on that, if I want Tick to face the other way without having to actually move Tick, I could change this number down here at the bottom. So if I want Tick to face to the left, I can click on the number and then press zero. And that way Tick won't move, but Tick will face to the left. If I want Tick to go this way, let's move Tick over here. Maybe I want Tick not to move by one space, and maybe I want Tick to move by multiple spaces. I clicked on this button up here, this is the grid feature. And Tick right now is at space number nine. That's where Scratch Cat or Scratch Jr. has placed Tick. Space number nine. So if I press on this, every single time Tick will move over to the right. This is the go home button, it's the start over. We can code Tick to do that, I'm just doing it manually for right now. Maybe I want Tick to go to space 12, but I don't want to have to go one space at a time. I can change that by clicking on this number, and then going to space, or putting number 3 in there, because 1, 2, and 3. So we should land on space number 3. Right now I'm just clicking these blocks to get it to start. We'll talk about how I can change that later, because you'll notice that something can be connected to the front of that. Up and down, I can move Tick up and down. Scratch Jr. has placed Tick at space number 8, so moving up would go up to 10. We can go down. Perfect. Same thing, we could change the numbers under this as well. This is turned to the right, and this is turned to the left. If I press this, Tick will be slanted. And I can keep pressing it a whole bunch of times or to get it to start over, but I can just hit the start over block. I want Tick to move in a circle, but I don't want to have to keep clicking it a whole bunch of times. Number 12 is a full circle. And I like to think of that as a clock. So if I press this, we're back to 12 o'clock. If I were to do 6, 6 would be upside down because that's half of the clock. Like that. Beautiful. And then same for this one, this would just be turning to the left. This one is the jump block. Right now, Tick is placed at space number 8. Tick will go up to, to 10, and then back down to 8. So up, down, they jumped. This one is the go home feature, it's the start over. So if I have Tick moving 6 spaces over to the right, they should land on space number 10. I'm going to have the go home connected at the end and then tick should go to number 10 and then all the way back to space number four. Excellent. That is exactly what I wanted. Notice how I did connect multiple blocks together. I can do that with any blocks. It doesn't have to just be blue. So if I wanted to connect a block together, I could do it just like that. Now I've been clicking on our block or our lines to run. That may not be as easy, especially if I have a, another character. Let me move this character so they're not on top of Tick. If I had code down here, I would have to click this one and then hurry back to click Ticks. And it's just not super easy to do that and it's not convenient. So with that, we could add an event or a trigger block. The trigger blocks are the yellow blocks. So the three that we're going to talk about today are the when the green flag is pressed, when the character is tapped or clicked, and when the character is bumped or bumped into, like something or someone ran into it. These two sending and receiving messages will be covered in a later video. 
I'm going to drag the green flag in front of this code. This is Tick's code. And I know it's Tick's code because there is a picture of Tick, and Tick has a yellow box around them. Move them back over here. If I want to click on the pig, I can drag out the green flag as well. And I can, I'm going to give it the same code. So I have basically seven spaces because six plus one is seven. So I'll have seven spaces. This green flag and this green flag are trying to show you that you should press this green flag up here. So when I do that, Tick and the pig will move at the same time. Perfect. If I change Tick's code so that Tick does not start with the green flag, Tick can start when I tap on them or when I click on them. When I press the green flag, only the pig will move now because Tick moves when I click on Tick. So if I click on Tick, Tick will move and the pig will not. If I want them to be moving at the same time, it's a little bit easier to click the green flag first and then click the character that needs to be moving. Only because if I click this character, so my character is Tick, if I click Tick, then a stop sign shows up and then it will stop Tick. So green flag first and then the character that needs to be pressed on. If I change Tick's code again, this time I'm going to have the code start when something or someone bumps into Tick. So I'm going to have Tick be right here. I'm going to move my pig and change the code to the pig so that it's facing the left. I want it to walk towards Tick and actually run into Tick. Perfect. So this way, when I press the green flag, Tick should walk towards and actually run into, or I'm sorry, the pig should walk into Tick, and Tick should walk towards the right. So green flag controls the pig, Tick has been ran into, thus causing Tick's code to start running. I do not need this pig anymore, so I'm going to delete it. I'm going to start Tick somewhere near the middle. Perfect. Now, Tick can do multiple actions at once, and it's not just Tick. There are multiple characters, so multiple characters can do this. If I drag out a green flag, and I want Tick, let's see, I'm going to start Tick over here. If I'm on space 3 and I want to go all the way to 20, 20 minus 3 is 17, or I could have just counted all of these numbers under here. So I will put a 17 here. I do like to end this code just because I will have multiple codes running at the same time. So I do like to end this one nice and neat. I'm also going to have Tick do another code when the green flag is pressed. But this time I want Tick to go up. So we're going to go up and over at the same time. This should cause a diagonal line. And I want to end that code. Perfect. I'm going to start taking the corner up and over at the same time. Excellent. I didn't quite really want it to do up like that, so I'm going to actually have it bounce. I want Tick to jump when walking sideways, kind of like they're jumping sideways. So I will add this, and I'm not going to change this number because that's how high Tick will jump. I want Tick to jump multiple times, so I will have Tick do this. Perfect. And now when I press the green flag, Tick should move 17 spaces to the right. Jump, jump, jump. Excellent. So it looks like Tick is jumping sideways. And then they finished their walk. Beautiful. Now I want to add a third action. I want Tick to turn in a circle, almost like that they're doing a cartwheel of some sort. I'm going to have Tick do that again. So they will move to the right. They will jump three times and they will do two cartwheels. That should be how that works. So over, jump, and turn. Perfect. They did walk a little bit too far and if I wanted to fix that, I could have changed that number right about there. So we have talked about how to use our blue coding blocks, which are actions, how to use our yellow coding blocks, which are triggers or events. They are what starts your code, how to change the number down at the bottom. So these numbers down here, we have talked about how to get a character to do multiple actions at once. So moving to the right, jump and turning all at the same time. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you would like to see more Scratch Junior tutorials, please follow and like TechWise Academy. Bye.